for the vlog. It's the practice time. session. What? Buttriff has won here. I've been telling you to throw it like Buttriff, and you've made no you've progress. You've been telling me to throw it like Bo Peterson. <laughs> no, you want to throw it like Bo Peterson. No. No. Why not? I want to get it through the fronts like those guys. They do it pretty good. I think the early hook is not the play. Throw the knuckleball. My hand is like all the way under it. My hands like this at the bottom. And you're I like, wonder throw why. The knuckleball. Here. Let me see this. You want me to put? You want, let me. Let, let me, me see a, that thing. Get a ball with a thumb in it. Get a ball with a thumb in it. You'll throw the, the knuckle. Shit. The same shit, Brad. I what? hope it more. No. Does that throw it three miles an hour? Nick, are we going? Or are we going? I. I've been waiting on it. Seriously. <laughs> Did you sneak? <laughs> this, okay. I just went through the whole thing. Put that thing at you, Chris. I can't believe. I <laughs> so. <laughs> Dead man. Don't bring that around. Oh. He like cleared out two pairs. Like what the Like what did you actually eat? How long did you wait on me? Long enough? You know. Nick's got this thing now where he's like exercising and eating healthy. No, it's not that. I'm just, I'm tired. It's, it's caught up to me now. Somebody in there had a house shirt on. Yeah, did you sign it? No, I was looking for him. That's why I'm late. But it kind of looked like that guy right there. I feel like it was definitely that guy right no, there. No. Did he uh, not have a house shirt on? It had it. I signed it. I did not, dude. I didn't, that's... Yeah. Oh, what, should I ask him? No. No? Should you... Take the camera. You should let me ask him. Oh my god. Alright, don't worry. Alright, Nick. What the <laughs> uh nipple. <laughs> what? What? Um Texas? What? Yeah. Um Are you in good spirits, buddy? I'm yes, yes. Besides the fact that I'm like exhausted. You can't be that exhausted. I'm pretty tired. We got so much sleep last yeah, night. Five hours, but it wasn't it was adult beverage sleep which actually is bad for you what are the chances you win this tournament um honestly probably 100 100 yeah damn i am looking good you're looking good bro holy crap your ass stinks no but your face looks pretty yeah, good look at that dude that's an actual bulge what have you been doing chris vibe status he works in a massage parlor he's probably been doing the massage no um hey did you see the prize fund they increased it to fifteen thousand. you know why because you yelled at him. No. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be anything. Jimbo won at 15000 So, oh, by the way, right. South Plains Lanes in Lubbock, Texas. We've been coming here forever. We love it. It's Barnes' wheelhouse. And he loves My it wheelhouse, too. <laughs> Mine, too. I blew the 300 once. I made the show here. Come on, Brad. You made what? I've made a show. Oh, you did make the show here. No, that was Oklahoma where you had three 300s. Yeah. Um, but Jimbo won at 15000 on top. And... He, uh, he gave the PBA like the numbers that he wanted, and then the PBA was like, okay, we need this much money, and then bam, Jimbo said he raised a ton of money this year, and he put it up, and he wanted his event to be like a higher paying event, and we love him for that. Oh yeah, anytime I 
pride or it goes out and above expectations and love. Yes. I mean, these proprietors work hard for their money. Yeah. And it's not like Nick and I bring thousands of people to the bowling center to buy money or to buy stuff. So anytime a proprietor puts up money, it's uh, such a great thing. So Lubbock, Texas, South Plains Lanes, if you're in the area, go check them out. Jimbo Evans, great, great guy. Um, the pattern, no urethane. Yet, match there will be your match play hasn't started. Match, match play there will be your but just standard 44 feet. There's hold. There's hook. There's hook. Throw whatever you want. Um. So what are we gonna do? Go get food, and you're gonna go on a run. I'm gonna uh, we're gonna go to the house. I'm gonna go on a run. We're gonna do a little quick legs. And How far away is the house? 5.2 miles. Okay. And then get some food. Okay. I'm gonna make food. What are you gonna make? Probably some chicken. The cauliflower rice and vegetables? Yep. Is that your gig? Oh yeah. I'll do that every meal. 100%. Team healthy. <laughs> yeah, except your butt. <laughs> All right, so I just got done editing some of the footage and I put my money where my mouth is. A lot of you have asked me, what equipment do you use if you want to start vlogging, especially during bowling tournaments? The smaller, the better, obviously. And I've been telling people, iPhone, or just use your phone, you know? Um, I had never really done it. I know the picture on the iPhone's great. I know the picture on the new Samsung S21 is great. But I kind of been naively telling people that. So th to this trip, I don't have a camera. And so I'm using my phone and I noticed in the clips that the audio was rough. So moving forward, we're just gonna, I don't know, figure it out, but uh, bear with me about the audio because uh, I didn't know, especially in the Nick scene, the, the car was just so loud, but um, anyway, so what I wanted to do to end this vlog is to read some of the tweets that you guys sent me today. I went to my Twitter and I said, vlogging the Lubbock Open this week and ask me some questions and I'll answer them in the vlog. So here I go. Um, I guess I'm just gonna read them from top down. Um, they're not in any particular order, but we'll just go with it. All right, so Darren Tang says, why don't we have a shirt that says Brad Effin Miller yet? And you know, when we, when we wanted to make that shirt and put out, gosh, the problem number two that comes along with filming with your phone is you can't use it and look at it while you're filming. So I'm using Kevin's phone and I lock myself out. So Darren Tang, why don't you have a shirt that says Brad Effin Miller yet? Well, we wanted to, we were afraid of putting a curse word on a shirt. Um, and we kind of just never pulled the trigger. We had a few designs out there, but I like what Darren says, effing, you know, doesn't actually show a curse word. So, did you just fart? As I just walk in after Are you, we doing, Hold on, hold on, hold you on, hold on. on. This is the perfect moment. I got a tweet. Did you just toot on him? No. Yes, no dude. I would never make right the crossfire. tweet. All right, Jeff Boski, he's a professional poker player. A lot of guys live in Vegas now. He goes, do you think there should be a separate tour for two-handed lefties or some sort of penalty? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I do. No. No, <laughs> no, no, I love how you just said lefty. Two-handed really? lefty. <laughs> you guys the pulse. Can't be two-handers. It's not like Belmont has 80 <laughs> titles. Uh, hey, Paggy just won your first regional. Yeah, let's Paggy won his first regional. And I'm sure you saw on his left channel. Me. I know I did. We'll have okay. to share that story. Okay. It's I'll I share the story. Up, if I showed up, the left I know, Kevin would have shut won. out. <laughs> that was obviously probably a joke, but the the game is changing rapidly. The, the the people have a lot higher rev rates at a lot younger age, and there's a lot of urethane being thrown, so which is like come full 360 from 30 years ago. So the the game is changing really quickly. No, not many people are using their thumbs anymore. They're you know. There's not a whole lot of technical analysis behind like the fits as much, and the, the game is just changing. Um, but no, there's no like super crazy big advantage. It's just the sometimes the patterns, the left is great and the right's bad, and vice versa, and it's always been that way. And it always comes full circle. Um, Jeff Regal says, What do you think you need to do to win the first title, and how are you working to get that? Well, I just need to, you know, it's not like I can't do it, and it's not like I haven't had a chance to do it, you know, it's like, you know, you finish second in a tournament or third, or even if you make a show, you know, you did the first step to, to win a title, and really everything after that is just getting the cards to fall the right way. Sometimes you just need an opponent to shoot 180, sometimes you just need to find the right look, but overall, the more opportunity you get to shows, um, the better 
for me, it's not so much like knowing how to bowl. I know how to bowl. Um, it's just the the opportunity, you know, just especially during a pandemic moving forward, we need, you know, some good fortune to come our way and some more tournaments to come our way um, and just keep doing that. But, you know, the thing is, is you can practice as much as you want at home. When you get out here, that's the real practice. So being out here is key. The more I'm out here, I win. Uh, Ronnie Russell goes, did you go with the big number two or number three guard? Did you play golf without a hat this year? All questions before I get the shock of your huge white head at the leasing next week. You know what's funny is I've been shaving my, I haven't went bald, but I've been shaving it low and yeah, bald's the new cool. What have you, uh, John Foster says, what have you worked on in the off time to help be more prepared for this stop? Do you have any expectations or ideas of how the lanes will break down? Um, expectation leads to uh, unhappiness. What's the what's the phrase? Expectation leads to disappointment or whatever. Um, so no, I don't expect the lanes to play a certain way. They change every time the machine goes down there just because it's oil and it's impossible to do the same thing and the temperature of the beds and everything, the humidity, everything changes. So you can't expect, you have to be ready for everything. But uh, what have I worked on? So for the past four years, I guess I've been on tour for seven years, the two things that I've been the worst at are urethane and lofting the gutter. And for a couple years, it was almost like we were doing those every stop. It was either you're throwing urethane or lofting the gutter. And that was when I would struggle. It's because I couldn't figure those two things out. I have since learned some urethane and uh, I don't know how much we're gonna be lofting the gutter especially if urethane is in play. So, um, but I've just been practicing. Usually when I struggle, I, my angles get too open and too far down the lane and I can't create the right ball motion. So I've been just working on tightening up and trying to make good shots. Um, how do you bowl differently if you do in qualifying match play and on TV? Well, TV so far, you know, hasn't been a ton of it, but the nerves are there. So differently, it's almost like the first couple of times I was just trying to block out the, the, the audience, you know? Um, but in match plan qualifying, I don't know. I feel like, I guess at each round, you just need to try and stay as patient as possible and not let your emotions override. Um, that's what I don't do very well. But um, if you can stay calm in qualifying, you better your chances to stay calm in match play. And then if you can do that and make it to the show, then you're going to go on the show with a lot of confidence. So um, I don't know. I think it's just person to person. Uh, I don't necessarily build different now. Kristen Anderson says, what are you and your buddy Kyle doing the rest of the year after the summer swing? By the way, best of luck to you on the summer tournaments. Um, I don't know. We want to do a lot of stuff. We want to get to you guys. We want to get to the fans. We want to run some clinics. Uh, we want to, I don't know. We just want to be in a bowling center. Anytime we're in a bowling center, we give ourselves the opportunity to make content. And then that's where we need to be. So I just want to be in a bowling center around bowlers, no matter how. Uh, what happened, uh, Isaac says, what happened to the vlog? I haven't seen it in a while with you and Kay Sherman. You know, honestly, we've gotten this question a lot. Um, I, you know, Kyle and I had different reasons for, when we, when we left Reno, he wanted to practice and bowl and like he was really motivated. And I was the opposite. I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to see a bowler. I didn't want to talk to a bowler. I didn't want, uh, I wanted no conversation. Uh, so we were like, he, he was struggling. So now he is struggling physically. Um, he's injured again. He tore his labrum in his shoulder. And, you know, I mean, just think, like, Kyle's a hell of a bowler. He's an amazing talent. And he's got to miss these events because of injury. This is not the first time. So he's struggling physically. Me um, is more of a mental thing. I think I just had way too many things going on. And like two years ago, I wanted the smoke. I wanted everyone bring it to me, complain to me, come to me, come to me, talk to me. I wanted all, all the attention come to me because I figured if I just override myself with talking to people and information, then I'll piece some things together and then be able to provide help. Um, and then it just got to be, it got to be too much. It was, I was listening to the players and trying to get some things done on that end. But then I was also in, like had this responsibility of making content and especially when the, the virus hit, there was just nothing much more I could do as far as a player committee. So, and you know, honestly, especially during a pandemic, it was getting frustrating knowing that we weren't gonna be bowling much. So one thing that I did on the off season was I, I no longer a part of the player committee. And now in my head, I'm just 
bowling and making videos and that's it. You know, there's no more thought about a thousand different things going on. So what I needed to do when I got home from Reno was just to chill, catch up on sleep, um, and get to a point where I love the game again. And then I wanted to practice. I wanted to work on it, even though it's exhausting at times. I wanted to get back to falling in love with it. And we're close, you know? I'm really excited to be here and I'm happy to see everybody. So uh, that's a good start. Uh, Will Barber goes, who's next to win their first title? Me, this weekend. Uh, Venom goes, this is the last one. Venom goes, man, oh man, good luck. And my question is, how does it feel with the fans being back? Yeah, the fans are, it's incredible because you don't quite understand how many people in this industry love bowling, how many people in this world love bowling, and they love to compete, and they love to watch it, and they love to follow it. And mm -hmm. um, every time we walk in the center now, we see fans that know who we are, and it's awesome. I feel like I have a million friends, you know, and when there's no fans, it's just, it's not the same, you know. Usually when bowlers are bowling, they're not, it's not like they're glowing with happiness. They're focused and trying their best. But the fans bring that glowing energy to the bowling center. So I'm um, very, very stuck down back. All right, so that is it. Um, I'm going to wrap this up, get some sleep. We got B-Squad tomorrow. Um, tomorrow I'll go into the arsenal that I'm using and uh, just some other stuff. I'm going to try and find a, some way to get some good audio. Um, but I feel great, you know, I, I feel really rested, I'm down a few pounds, I, you know, feel confident in myself, um, for the things that I've been doing the past couple of months, so even if this stretch doesn't go great, which, there, I mean, there's a chance, I mean, you never know what, what's going to happen, but, um, we're just in a good spot, I mean, there's really no reason to stress about it, um, and I've just kind of come to that conclusion, and I'm just going to work on it, you know, but being a professional bowler is stressful, you know, it's not like we're just, you know, have money trees laying around, so you gotta figure out a way to make a living. But I've come to the conclusion that if you just work, it'll happen. So this weekend, Lubbock Open, here we go.